Welcome seventh grade, dividing decimals today. So there's two small variations of problem we can have. Uh, we'll start with the easier variation. Uh, the first rule for dividing decimals is you have to have a whole number for the divisor. The divisor is the number outside the box. Uh, the dividend is the name of the thing inside the box. Quotient will be the answer. But we need to have a whole number in the divisor. There can't be any decimals here. And that's the way we are for these first four problems. There is a whole number already for the divisor, so we have a head start on these. So what we do for these is the decimal has to go into the answer straight up from where it was originally positioned every time. Straight up. Straight up. Uh, anytime we have a decimal, it goes straight up. So then we just divide. Five can't go into four. So above the four, I need a zero to fill that space because four isn't enough to handle that. Five does go into 45 nine times, and I'm good with that. And if you want to go five times nine and write 45 and show there's nothing left, you could, but you don't have to because there's nothing left. 0.09, that's it. For this, we're going six into seven goes once. Gives me a 6. I need to write this work now because there's more still to come. Subtracting gets me a 1. Drop to 26. 6 into 12 is going to be 2, which gets me a 12. And the only thing left is a 6. And 6 into 6 is going once evenly. I could write a 6 and subtract to get 0, but I'm not going to because I ran out of room. So 0 0.121 is the answer there. Clear this out just to make a little room because I underestimated slightly there. For this, we already again did decimal straight up. So when we take the decimal straight up, we're then going to try to go 4 into 2, which it won't. So that's a 0. 4 into 23 is a 5. And then we have to do 4 times 5 is 20 because that didn't quite work the way we'd like it to work to go evenly. We'd subtract to have a 3. And then what you have to do if the problem didn't end, there's no R for remainder in these uh, decimal rules. You have to add a zero to the problem and keep going. So the three becomes a 30 and go again. Four into 30 is seven. Four times seven is 28. Gets me a temporary two, but I'm not done. So I need to go another zero. Four into 20 is five perfectly. So now we're done. I could write the 20 and subtract to get zero if I wanted to, but I don't have room, so I'm not going to. One more of that type. Again, we start off by the decimal point goes straight up. Eight and the one won't go. If you're in the whole number positions, you don't need to write that zero at the beginning. That's just sort of messy looking. I don't really want it. Eight and the 12 is one. Gets me an eighth. Gets me a 44. 8 into 44 is 5, gets me 40, subtract to get 4. If you're not done, as before, add a 0. 8 into 40 is perfect, and there's a 5. And that's the easier part of the lesson where the divisor already was a whole number. If you don't understand, maybe don't pause rewind right now, maybe don't go forward yet. If you are good, go forward. These problems have a decimal in the divisor. If there's a decimal in the divisor, your first thing is to make that be a whole number. This is going to have to go right one position. If you move the divisor one position, move the dividend one position. And then we're going to go straight up from where we just moved to B. Uh, I'll come back and divide that in a minute. Let me do all the moves first. This, I'm going to have to move two places to get it all the way to the right. So this has to move two places. And then we go straight up for the decimal to be in the answer. This is a day where neatness helps you. Just make sure things stay lined up where you want them to go. Don't be all crooked and weird with your work. This is going over two. So this is going over two. And the decimal is going to go straight up. We'll finish those three and then we'll do the last one in one swoop through. So three into eight is two. Gets me six. Subtracting there is 2 and 7. 3 into 20, oh, I'll drop the 6 while I'm at it. 3 into 27 is 9, gets me a 27. And I only have to drop the 6. 3 into 6 is 2, and that will divide it pretty well. 
this we're going 5 into 27 is 5. We could have had a 0 here, but you don't need it. Okay, 5 into 2 doesn't go. That could be a 0, but we don't need the zeros at the beginning before the decimal places. Uh, we're going to go then, and 5 times 5 is 25. Gets me a 2. Didn't work, so we fill in a 0. 5 into 20 is 4, and that one's fine. This next one I have an issue because I copied the problem again twice, so I didn't really want to do that. I meant to have the problem here be 0.04 into 0.8. So sorry about that small mishap, but we're good now. For this, the decimal is going to move over 2, so this decimal is going to move over 2. That's a little different, and that's why I wanted this problem to be part of the lesson, is if you move over and you run out of numbers, you have to stick a zero into that empty slot to finish the problem and have enough spaces there, because the decimal has to go straight up. Four into eight goes twice, gets you eight, at which point there is nothing left, and you're kind of sort of almost done, but you still have to finish filling in the spaces that are created by us. The answer's not two, this empty space needs a zero to be 20. If you have 20 point, it's not wrong, wrong, but it's undesirable to put decimal points when you don't need them. Math is all about trying to write it in the simplest way if you can. And it's simpler to just say 20 than 20 point. Uh, you'll never meet someone and say, how old are you? And they say, I'm 20 point. That's just not a thing. Okay, so don't need the point there, don't put it. Last one has the same kind of thing going on. We're going over three have to push the decimal all the way to the right. So in the dividend, push it all the way to the right. We need a couple zeros here because we made two empty spaces. Decimal's going to have to go straight up. So 8 into 31 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract and get some 7. Drop a 0. 8 into 70 is 8. So 6 to 4. Subtract and get 6. Drop the next zero. 8 into 60 is 7. 7 times 8 is 56. We get 4, and you want to be done because we ran out of numbers, but we're not. We have a 4. So when we're not done and have numbers left, add a zero. 8 into 40 is going to be a 5, so I just need to nudge that over a bit, and we'll go to 387.5. That's it. Uh, there's a homework paper, dividing decimals you could do. Some of them will start like the beginning with divisors that are good and just start dividing. Other ones, the divisor has to move over. If you see the problem written like this, sometimes people get confused about what goes where. So when you see a problem written like that, the first number is always the dividend. That goes in the box. The second number is the divisor that goes out of the box, and I believe the worksheet is written this way, and then you have to create your division boxes somewhere wherever you're doing your work. Uh, but the second number is the divisor, goes out. First number is the dividend, goes in if we're writing it that way. Bonus information, you can also show division with a fraction bar, but that's not going to impact your life today. Uh, we could have this go on top, this go on bottom. That can show you dividing, but not, not working today. That's it for today, 7th grade.